Type 1, unidentified disease. Biohazard warning. Several cases of an unidentified infection have been reported in several parish residents. Do not drink the water. The tumor yielded a strange and frightening discovery. They were filled with aggressive worm-like organisms. The sick are no longer human. It appears the organisms are being birthed from the virus. Stay human, don't drink the water. August 8, 1988, an unidentified viral disease begins infecting people in the Tangipahoa waterways. The first evidence of this outbreak is reported by one Dr. Julia Williams. She claims that a virus, hereby nicknamed the Tangi virus, has begun infecting people who swam in the Tikfa River. Several patients were admitted with symptoms consisting of rashy skin, itchy throat, irritated eyes, nausea, and diarrhea. Patient 1, infant, asymptomatic. Patient 2, deceased, complications due to meningitis. Patient 3, child, stable. Patient four, pregnant adult, stable but lost child. Soon after the discovery of this disease, Dr. Williams learns that tumors are growing inside these patients. Not only that, but they seem to be gestating worm-like creatures inside of them. That's pretty neat. The virus initially reproduces in a lytic cycle, but undergoes metamorphosis in time, becoming a swarm of parasitic worm-like creatures. The virus state is likely the immature form, making the worms the next stage in the disease's development. The worms, once hatched, make their way to the brain and nervous systems. That's not ominous at all. Apparently, the only way to detect a secondary infection is via autopsy. Upon reporting this to her supervisor, Dr. Williams was assured that samples would be sent to the CDC. For some reason, her supervisor didn't really consider the brain worms a serious threat, despite Julia's tumor-latent research. Julia nosily contacts the CDC herself, and the CDC says it hasn't received the samples. When she confronts her supervisor, he says another parish confirmed the substances to be Giardia. Virology 101. I know you're a human, but a human child would wouldn't confuse these two for each other. In the following tape, we find out that despite her repeated warnings, the parish government has been promoting and supplying the water to all the people. The human researcher thinks the CDC was not alerted because the waterways are big money and the parish didn't want a possibly deadly disease tainting that valuable income that can be used to do white stuff out of hooker butthole. From an outside species perspective, I doubt that's the case, but we already know y'all love green paper more than controlling your own brains. She fears this may be a potential pandemic, but that's not the most concerning aspect of this. But first, a quick word from our sponsors, the Tangifoa Waterways. Wasn't that just breathtaking? Anyways, patient four brutally killed her husband with her bare hands and then kidnapped patient one after murdering both of the child's parents. Patient three also violently attacked his parents to the point of hospitalization and all were last spotted in the waterways near Kate's Crossing. Several people have been reported to have gone missing on the river and our human researcher is convinced that it's connected. In the next report, we find that the summer went exactly as expected, more sick that recovered quickly, so no one gives a shit. The parish is building a landfill near the river. Rumor is they're covering something up. So my idea is if we just fill the river with trash, everyone will blame that for why they're sick instead of the virus. Some say it's a spaceship. I have no idea why they're saying that. It seems kind of out of nowhere. She says she's going to threaten to go to the press and was terminated from her job immediately. When she returned to her office, she found a tape on her desk with a note that said, Lab 8, come at night. The following was recovered from a missing persons case. Tape 7 is called Alien. Apparently, her supervisor and his assistant were the ones who left the tape. They were trying to figure out who they can trust with the current threat. They believe most of the parish government has been infected. The virus is sentient. It doesn't want to just spread. It wants to control. The worms spread throughout the nervous system so they can override the host when needed. Hell, all right, game recognized game. This entity knows how to control a nervous system like a natural. The tumor acts as a second brain. Most will simply succumb to the virus and lose control. A small portion will die, and the remaining 
remaining victims will mutate into giant amphibious-like creatures as is the obvious next step. Afterwards, they went to her supervisor Jim's home and had an orgy. Jim explained that the local government was going to introduce the virus into the water supply. They discussed plans of how to go public over a nice bottle of wine. So romantic. Suddenly, she awoke and realized she had passed out. Don't worry, this story gets dark, but not that dark. She was alone, and Jim had left a note. Welcome to the family, and see you back at work in two weeks. Last night, Jim seemed confident that they could get the CDC and military involved. She returns to work feeling under the weather. <coughs> Foreshadowing. But her and Jim have a big meeting today, so the show must go on. Jim wasn't at work today, but he left the bottle of wine they shared two weeks ago with instructions to analyze it. So she did. Finding samples of the virus. She's infected with the Tangy virus. Called it. What a twist! She immediately left, and as she drove away, the staff of the entire building watched her from the parking lot, smiling deviously. Jump to February 5th, 1990. She's working in a veterinarian's office, poisoning her body with antiparasitic drugs and chemotherapy meant for dogs. I've been there, homie. Fun fact, dog Xanax is just regular Xanax, but smaller. Do with that information what you will. She's 40 pounds underweight, bald, and her mouth is covered in sores, but she's kept the disease from overtaking her, buying her time until she can find a cure. By late April, she can feel the worms scratching at her skull, the drugs becoming less effective. Her fingers are spasming, her eyes are twitching. She is dying. May 5th, 1990, she's been having strange dreams, thinking about Ireland, France, moving to the States for med school. June 15th, 1990, I miss my mom and my dad. There's so much I wanted to do. I wanted to meet someone, grow old, have kids. Now I'll never do anything. August 27th, 1990. I can hear them now. They want me to consider them my children. I consider them a plague. September 21st, 1990. I lost my job at the vet's office. My memory isn't what it used to be. I'm mailing these tapes to the FPTV cable station. The council too. Maybe they can use what I learned to save us. October 5th, 1990. I'm ending things tonight. If anyone watching this wants to low my last words there, boil anything you drink. It kills the virus. After the old FPTV building was torn down, hundreds of VHS tapes needed to be digitized and cataloged. Most of it seemed mundane, but on 12.03.90, a mysterious message appeared in the channel's nightly ad sections. It appeared only once. Don't trust your government. They have sold you out. You have been warned. Why would anyone trust the government? What do you think, I'm an idiot? Three days later, an ill-timed Boyle advisory appeared during a pre-recorded newscast. Man, it's hysterical. By working with the property owners and other concerned groups throughout the parish, we have made great strides in cleaning the river such as this. The Nittobany River is a big concern of ours. By having the landfill nearby, it does create a possible uh, image of polluting that river, but I can assure you, we at the landfill are making every effort that we possibly can to see that the landfill does not pollute any river, any stream, any body of water uh, throughout this parish. And I am This is the dumbest sentient virus I've ever met. And I don't say that lightly. You infect an entire town's worth of people and you choose the most fifth grade science teacher ass looks like a priest that touches kids motherfucker to be your wooden actor? You want people to pay attention. You get the two most attractive people in town and make them get naked. I guarantee people will watch your water commercial or whatever this is. I like to imagine this guy seeing his pre-recorded newscast with the boil water advisory in it and then just like slumping down into his chair. Boiling water saves lives. You just gotta make sure to drink it while it's still boiling though or else it's not safe. Within a week of the boil water advisory, the parish was gripped in an environmental disaster. They responded to this by bragging about their health center. And then they said you should go there if your health gets a bit fucky wucky. In the following few days, the boil water advisory was dropped with no warning or news coverage. Just a strange 15 second spot saying the boil advisory was lifted. And the parish government adopted a strange aggressive pro-drinking water campaign? And terror has come to America. And this typical day in anywhere USA, whether rural or urban, will be forever changed. In the aftermath of such devastation, 
will see a shift, a return in focus to the small town roots of morality, a morality that has remained rooted and intact beneath the camouflage of the everyday citizen's hustle. Life is a fragile gift that is delivered to us in pieces, in small moments, and it only achieves meaning as we cherish and blend the pieces, even the seemingly insignificant pieces, into a full universal whole. Okay, this ad immediately screams to me that the water is not safe. Despite the continuous pro-water ads, the Tangifoa Parish seemed to be getting back to normal. We then see a newscast with a pro-drinking water ad, followed by an anti-drinking water biohazard warning. Biohazard warning. Unknown substance detected in the water. Do not drink the water. Do not bathe in the water. Do not give to pets. Boiling is not enough. Water could be highly toxic. Something unnatural is in the water. The sick are no longer human. Stay human. Don't drink the water. Guys, this is human politics all over again. I'm not gonna pick a side just because you hate each other. You need to recognize that you're both stupid. According to those living in the parish at the time, panic followed this message's broadcast. No idea why that would happen. It just pointed out the one resource keeping you alive is literal poison. Anti-water messages began to appear during random broadcasts. Within days of the warning, parish officials began working around the clock at the landfill. What they were doing was never disclosed to the public. Following this, the following message was played 24-7 for a week. until it was abruptly stopped by a different message. Nothing was ever said about the odd event ever again, except right now, which is when we're talking about it. Wait, how does this video know that no one ever talked about it again? How do you like, can you check that? Most consider it a joke. A few think it was something more sinister. We will probably never know, but I'm gonna tell you it's monsters definitely. Update, the Tangifoa government has asked the uploader to take down the videos, and he's not sure how much longer they'll stay up. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and say f the Tangi Poa government, Pahoa, Tangi Pahoa, uh, and keep my videos up. Not really, I'm sure you're wonderful people, and if you have an issue, we can talk this out rather than just going through YouTube. In the late 90s, an unnamed storm settled over southeast Louisiana. Flash floods occurred without warning. Most of the population was trapped when the Tangi Poa River overflowed. The area was devastated, with the town of Cates Crossing being hit the hardest. The fire department was sent to evacuate citizens. Despite their best efforts, the bodies of over 200 people were never found. Most blame the rising river but some say it was something else. The men and women serving that day still don't speak of the Great Flood. This tape is the only first-hand account of that event, and I'm just gonna play it in its entirety. Gary, come in. What's your ETA? Five minutes, give or take. Copy that. Call her back when you get on the scene. Roger that. Over now. Molly, come in. Go ahead. I'm at the old church, and there's nobody here. You at the old Baptist? Looking right at it, and it's him. Somebody must have beat you to it. Look, we got an elderly couple southbound. Can you do it? Then four, I'm on it. Hey, Molly, the elderly couple is in my A. Call HQ and see if someone's making these rescues. 10 4, I'll put the word out. Hey, 
Hey Molly, I'm at the Collins Wood subdivision. Where are they? All the way in the back. Then four. Molly, I'm at the back of the Collins Wood. No one's here. There's no way someone else evacuated 30 people. Have you heard anything from HQ? That's a negative. Try again. What the hell was that? Sorry, trying to get some caffeine. N no, I, I heard something. Wouldn't worry about it. Probably just an animal. The other guy said they've been hearing all sorts of stuff. Look, I'm gonna um, start making my way back to you, okay? 10-4. Gary, come in. How close are you to North Street? Hmm, about a block away. We have a Jane Doe in need of medical. She has lacerations on her right arm. Says she was attacked by a monster in the middle of evacuation. Oh, what? I don't know. Probably was a snake or gator. Hold on. Gary, I'm gonna have to let you go. Some kind of emergency in the front office. Nothing like a flood to bring out the best in people. Again, there's no one here, but something doesn't seem right. Molly, you there? Molly, come in, please. Jesus Christ, that sounds close. Lieutenant Gary Davis was never found. During the cleanup, rumors of monsters in the water circulated throughout the community. However, the parish quickly squashed those rumors. People to this day go missing in the Tangipahoa River. We invite you to come visit the best kept secret in Louisiana, Tangipahoa Parish. Business is booming, restaurants have reopened, miles of waterways are ready for you to enjoy. Every weekend, there's something fun to do in our little parish. Since the Great Flood, we have rebuilt our community into the perfect place to raise your family. So come and visit your friends in Tangipahoa Parish. You might even find you'll never want to leave, but if you do, we'll be happy to send a piece of our community home with you. We here in Tangipahoa Parish are proud to announce Tangi Water will be available in every major supermarket in America. And who knows, maybe soon, people all over the world might get a chance to enjoy a cool, refreshing taste of tangy water. Tangy water, it'll change you. Oh, uh, shit. Looks like we gotta save this species dumbass again, huh? But I do know we're near New Orleans, so let's go drink in the street?
If you enjoyed this video, please go check out the original project. It's super underrated and I wanted to give this awesome thing a shout out and hopefully give more attention to it because this great work honestly deserves many more eyes on it. That's it for this episode. If you want us to come back and check out the sequel to the Tangy Virus, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, with all notifications enabled. Before we go, I'd like to thank a whole bunch of artists for creating some awesome new additions to the Stills Collection. We have returning artist Amber Phoenix with this edition and Grave Mud with this edition and then we have Tyrant with this edition, Gexorcist with this edition and Deity Skill with these editions. These dope artists are now cult classics and will be in the description of every video. Oh, yeah, you're right.